Okay, so uh, I'm grateful to now be able to share some of my own research. And as a brief introduction, I'll share that I completed a master's degree at Kansas State University and PhD at Virginia Tech, both in marriage and family therapy. I then completed postdoctoral work at Penn State with an emphasis on mental health and aging. I'm currently a faculty member in the School of Family Life and I teach classes on adult development and aging, family stress and resilience and advanced statistics. Uh, my main research efforts focus on understanding how couples manage health concerns. And I also study some grandparent grandchild relationships and the transition to retirement. With that, I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. Okay, so I'm excited to share some work uh, tonight about how health or illness and health behaviors relate to marital quality in later life uh, for older couples and appreciates uh, funding that I've received from the uh, Veterans Administration Office of Rural Health and the Gerontology Program and as well as uh, support from wonderful students and colleagues uh, and some of the research that I'll be sharing here tonight. Um, I was thinking about uh, asking the question, what are things that couples in later life share together? And one of the things we know they share is meals, they eat together. Uh, sometimes they do leisure activities together. And sometimes they share a living residence, oftentimes they do. And, uh, but how about, oops, let's see. How about chronic illness? Is this something that's shared if one of them has a chronic illness like cancer or COPD or diabetes or arthritis? Is that something that impacts the couple relationship or is it just belong to one person? And what about exercise? When couples exercise or when one person exercises, is that something that has an impact on the relationship? And those are the two things that I'm gonna address here today. Um, I lived with my grandpa for one semester when I was an undergraduate student. These are my grandparents here on my mom's side. My, gra my grandmother was in a nursing home at the time. And I remember being surprised that my grandpa often spoke in terms of we, and he was referring of course to his wife. And uh, at the time I just thought, well, that's kind of interesting, but I, I appreciate now that that's a, that was a symbol in a way of his relationship with his wife. Uh, and that couple relationships take on a meaning of their own that's very important. Um, we have uh, some theoretical work that has uh, addressed how couples in a unified way uh, are affected by illness. Um, some work by Berg and Upchurch. Here they have this model where dyads or couples appraise an illness where they cope and they adjust and notice all the arrows, everything's connected with everything else. And, and these processes uh, play out in a dyadic way. Uh, more recently, Helgeson and colleagues have talked about communal coping, where an illness is our problem and people work together to solve problems um, and provide support to one another. And so we have a theoretical grounding for thinking about illness in terms of couple relationships. Um, some work that I've done has shown that, and actually this has been substantiated in a number of studies that illness affects marital quality. And we found that it's especially challenging when a spouse is ill, or that is it affects the marital quality of someone when their spouse is ill rather than themselves. And people that have an illness, oftentimes they benefit from the relationship in different ways. Uh, when the husband is the ill spouse, that tends to not go over as well, uh, or it's more difficult for the wife. When husbands, excuse me, when wives are ill, oftentimes husbands in later life, they now have an opportunity to connect with their wife in different ways than they've done in the past. Um, when couples are younger and illness is not so much expected, uh, it tends to have more of a negative impact. And I will say these results are mixed. That is sometimes when there's an illness in marriage, it brings couples closer together. And uh, so I want to acknowledge that. Uh, in the current study I'm going to show you, I want to talk about how daily physical symptoms are related to interactions within marriage and also what things might buffer a health stressor. And particularly, I'm going to look at spiritual or religious 
some kind of meaningful influence on someone's day. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit from study, a second study looking at exercise. Uh, research on illness in marriage is definitely growing, and there's a good body of research there. However, fewer people are looking at the benefits of healthy behaviors like exercise in relationships. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. When people exercise, we feel good, we're healthier, it affects our neurotransmitters in positive ways, helps us to respond to stress. And um, so exercise, we know that there are a lot of benefits from it, but are there relationship benefits for it? And, and what if we exercise as a couple? Does that have even additional benefits? So I'll address those questions. Uh, the data that I'm going to show you comes from a study, a daily diary study for 14 days that's housed within this larger study. In 1966, uh, well, Von Call, Luther Otto, and Kenneth Spenner, they started up the early parts of the study. And I'll say Von Call, he came in in 1980 there. But this started out as a study of careers from high school seniors in the state of Washington. And they did a follow-up in 1980 and then rebranded in 2010, calling this the Life and Family Legacy Study with uh, over 3,000 people participating. And we went in in 2011 and got a random stratified sample of people that were married or, or in a marriage-like relationship and asked them to fill out uh, surveys about their relationship, about their health. And this is where we got information that we could look at to see how are older couples uh, dealing with these kinds of things. Uh, this study continues on, and right now they're, they're carrying out cognitive screens and collecting saliva samples from a part of the sample. So really, it's an amazing data set. And uh, but I'm just going to report on the daily diary stuff here uh, mentioned. So um, 559 of these couples were invited to participate. And they were mixed by health, residence, and military status. And 191 couples re returned usable surveys from both spouses that were on matched days that we could compare. And with all of the surveys we, we uh, received back, we have over 5,000 days of surveys uh, from these couples uh, that we looked at. And to give you an idea about this sample, so we have people in their early 60s. They have on average a college education and about $88,000 a year. And about 55% of the sample is in their first marriage. And many of these are long-term marriage with an average length of 30 years. So this is a little higher SES sample, um, and, but still, uh, still amazing in, in many ways. Um, the main outcome that we're looking at here is, well, there are two. One is positive marital events, where we look at if your spouse said something nice to you that made you feel loved or helped you out with something or comforted you, uh, showed interest in the events of your day, things like this. And then negative marital events, where it looked at if there was an argument or if you felt criticized or if a spouse let you down, these types of things. Predictors in, in this study uh, we I'm first going to look at physical health symptoms, these that you see on the screen. Uh, of course, at the time, we didn't ask about COVID, but it, we, I'm sure we'll see some research on COVID in marriage in the, in the near future. Um, and then regarding religious or spiritual influence, we asked how much of an influence were your religious or spiritual activities on your day to day? And looked at that as a moderator. Um, Let's see, regarding exercise, I'm kind of flipping back and forth between these two studies because we use the same data set. But regarding exercise, we asked them if they exercised each of the 14 days. And the within person, I'm going to use a little bit of jargon here. Within person refers to, did I exercise today? And between person refers to um, my average of exercise across the 14 days. And that's usually compared between the other people. So a within person uh, looks at the effect of my exercise today on my outcomes today, and between person compares me with other people in the sample. Okay, um, I won't talk a lot about the analysis, but I will say that because these couples are married and because they filled out surveys multiple days in a row, we had to take that into account that those things are correlated. And we expected that 
on days with higher symptoms that couples would have poor marital outcomes and that uh, daily religious or spiritual influence would benefit marital outcomes and that it would also buffer symptoms as they related to marital outcomes. Um, and the findings, these are all from the same model, but I broke them up into different slides to just make it a little easier to digest. First of all, we see an interesting finding that when husbands reported more symptoms, they also reported more positive marital interactions. And that was contrary to what we expected. But uh, to me, this is evidence that wives are helping out. So the husband's having a lot of symptoms more than, more than he typically does. And wives are probably increasing in positive marital interactions those days to help out. Um, regarding negative marital interactions, we see that physical symptoms for husbands, if they have more symptoms than they regularly do, that's related to more negative marital interactions. And people that had more physical symptoms on average also reported more negative marital interactions. So physical symptoms can be hard in marriage. Uh, looking at religious influence, we see a pretty consistent pattern here that uh, religious influence, both within person, like was it influential for me today or more today than my average, and between person, people who report religious influence more, more on average than other people are reporting more positive marital interactions. Uh, let's see, whoops, wrong direction. We also see this, uh, this is kind of an interesting effect. We call it a partner effect, where when husbands reported more spiritual or religious influence, wives are reporting more positive marital interactions. We see the same with negative marital interactions for wives, uh, where they're reporting fewer of those with uh, more religious influence on a given day. And then that, that bottom red box there is, is again that partner effect for husbands. When the husbands are reporting more spiritual influence, the wives are reporting fewer negative marital interactions. And then I wanna highlight this one here that shows that, uh, that religious influence for wives was actually a buffer to their physical symptoms. And this is a picture of what it looks like. I'll focus on the top line here. On the Y axis, we have negative marital interactions. And on the x-axis, we have low symptom days and high symptom days. And when we compare low symptom days to high symptom days, those with low religious influence have higher negative marital, act marital interactions on high symptom days. Uh, so this suggests that if you have a higher religious or spiritual influence on that day, that it's a buffer. Okay, now very quickly, I'm gonna to jump to the exercise study where we expected with exercise that marital outcomes would improve and that with conjoint exercise, when couples exercise together, that their marital out uh, outcomes would improve as well. Sorry, you guys, I'm talking really fast, hoping to get through everything here. I, I tend to do too much here, but um, hopefully it's exciting. Uh, okay, so here, what we see here is that for wives that exercise, we see in the red boxes, when wives exercise, they're also reporting higher positive marital interactions on those days. Husbands did not report that. And there were no partner effects where wives or husbands exercised and it affected the partner's reports of positive marital interactions. Uh, we also see that when wives act, exercise more on average, that they also are reporting more positive marital interactions. Um, when couples exercise together, there was an effect for both spouses' reports of positive marital interactions, where both of them reported that they went up. Wives also reported fewer negative marital interactions on those days that there was exercise. These are both within person effects. So what it kind of suggests is that exercise, the impact of exercise only lasts for that day. It doesn't spill over to the next day. So, so we got to keep exercising. Um, Okay, so I'll take a deep breath and say, what do we take away from here, from these two studies? For the first study, if we get sick, we, we can recognize that that will have an impact on our partner and on our marriage. If you have a wife, be grateful for likely support from her on sick days. If you're a husband, be sensitive to a wife on sick days. And I would say, I would add to that, offer support. 
um, where we, we, we didn't see that effect there, but that doesn't mean that in certain relationships, those don't occur. We can, we can change that, we can intervene. Um, we also see that meaningful spiritual or religious influence can help on sick days. Regarding exercise, we say that it's beneficial in some ways. Uh, husband's daily exercise isn't necessarily linked to marital interactions, um, but uh, when couples exercise together, we see a consistent pattern of benefits. And um, so I, I would encourage this kind of thing. Um, let's see, although we didn't see a benefit, a between person benefit on conjoint exercise, meaning exercising more versus less between people in the sample didn't necessarily have an effect. It was on the days that couples exercise together, then there was an effect. So again, I guess I already said that we can't expect it to carry over to the next day. Um, so uh, one of the interesting things we see here is a gender difference for wives and husbands. And some of the research shows that emotional transmission, that when emotions carry over from one spouse to another, wives are a little more in tune with those. And uh, so I guess husbands, we can step up and, and try and be a little more alert and attentive. Uh, thank you very much. I went kind of quickly there. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you both again so much. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see you all later. We'll go ahead and sign off now. Thank you. Thank time. you. Thank you so much.